Absolutely. And we mentioning is threat in a lot in a lot of ways. Sometimes it's subtle. And Mr. Mr. Piercy is not some novice or wilting <coughs> flower. It's not like it's his first go around on this merry-go-round. He knows what's going on. He made it clear to, to both of you during the deposition that he knows what's going on and that Mr. Martin doesn't have any power to, to threaten him. He said he said it several times. He said the parole board's not ever going to let him out. He said that, uh, well, I mean, I don't know which ones of you were to hear when he stood up to Judge Casada two years ago, and Judge Casada wasn't able to threaten him into getting him to testify. So I'm just, I'm just making sure that I understand what the what the ground rules are expected to be. Anything else you want to add on the state uh, state's interference with witness?
February 25th. Let me start on the left side. State, you met with him? Yes, Your Honor. Why didn't you meet with him and how long ago? Yesterday, uh, for about 15 minutes, our investigator went over and spoke with him. Which investigator? Uh, Neil Fraley. All right. Anybody from the defense side meet with him since February 25th? No, Your Honor. We would like if there's any notes or any, anything that requires disclosure, we'd like that disclosed. I know if they have disclosure obligations. Dan, have you met all your disclosure obligations? Yes, there's nothing Brady or anything related to that in those. Okay. So, I asked if anybody met with him, but I should have asked this as well. Has anybody had any phone conversations with him or emails with him as well? Uh, defense? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. All right. Trying to be comprehensive here. So, is there anything you can share with me uh, before we uh, bring Mr. Daly or Mr. Piercy out and start to talk to him about uh, his state of mind or things I should be concerned about? Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. All right. Well, <laughs> the man's been in perpetual flux for 35 years, so to say nothing has So the final issue and the most important issue, I'm going to give each side an opportunity to tell me how they think I should coach, uh, or an opportunity to coach me off and tell me how you think I should try and persuade Mr. Piercy to testify today, because this plane doesn't get off the ground unless Mr. Piercy's willing to talk to us today. So I'm going to give it my best uh, go to persuade him. I know that others have tried to persuade him in the past. I have a great deal of respect for Judge Casada and he can be a convincing man when he wants to, but I think we figured out in 2017 there's no way to threaten him into testifying because he knows there's nothing we can do to him. Um, I can't hold him, in, I could hold him in contempt, but it uh, would have all the same effect with me shouting at rocks to fly. They aren't gonna do it, and Mr. Mr. Pierce is not gonna change his mind because I, I threatened him with contempt. Same thing with threatening him with perjury. He knows he's doing life in prison. He knows he's not getting parole. Nothing I can do to threaten him with the parole commission. You made that pretty clear to the both of you at several different uh, several different points during the deposition that, uh, that that's not going to work. So I've got probably a couple hundred years of experience as uh, lawyers and litigators in front of me. Uh, who wants to go first with suggestions as a, to how I influence or cajole him into uh, speaking? Nobody wants to leap into the fray? You want a moment to confer with counsel and come up with the best plan? I, I try to tell you Three days ago, I was going to need some advice. I mean, I've got a plan, but I'm willing to substitute it with a better plan if somebody's got some ideas. We have any moment around. Take a moment. Anybody here from facilities to help me uh, get back on the phone? No? Still not going to lead on that. So it, it clearly concerns him. Uh, there's no few, uh, few 
the things you've got in the Department of Corrections. And I really do that. You know, before I threaten somebody, I like to know if I'm bluffing. And I, I want to be, be clear, and I know this is in an abundance of caution, and maybe it's in the interest of self-preservation. I don't want to threaten anyone to let him do what he wants to do. I mean, you are after a suggestion. We're, we're giving I know. I'm, well, that's why I, I couched it in, in terms of persuasion. Okay. That's actually supposed to be your specialty. I looked at your website, so I'm trying to persuade him. But, uh, but uh, if I have to persuade him by threatening him, that's, uh, that's the last, my last choice, only because it hasn't worked in the past. So I don't, I don't, see, a, I don't see a good plan is let's try what's already failed for 35 years. So I was just wondering if anybody had a different angle. State, what have you got for me? Please 
enter your pen followed by the pound or Record your name after the beat, followed by the pound or hash sign. At Syracuse. For a menu of available commands, press star <laughs> one. There are three participants in the conference. Great. If you can uh, sound off and identify the conference. At Syracuse. <laughs> Have joined the conference. Is there anybody from Mr. Daly on the call? Kate Oppenheimer from Mr. Daly. Anybody else? I didn't hear her. Kate Oppenheimer from Mr. Daly. Oh, Sid? Sid Oppenheimer. Uh, good morning, Ms. Oppenheimer. You've joined our program already in progress and uh, present at the- Thank you, uh, Your Honor. No problem. The president at the podium is uh, Mr. Piercy's mother, and I'm about to talk to her about how I might convince Mr. Piercy to participate in the hearing today. Ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. Okay. My name is Sally Simon. I am Jack Piercy's mother. Jack does know that I'm here today. Okay. He wishes uh, my husband and I to be here. Okay. We are in close contact with him. Okay. I wish to clarify the thing of that telephone call that has been discussed here. Uh, it was in my paper on the two days after Christmas, and Jack had not told me of the situation. So naturally, when I saw it in the newspaper without hearing it from Jack first, I was upset. So I think that explains the telephone call. And if you think of a mother whose son has been in prison all of these years, and then I see something like that in the newspaper. So I was upset, and I absolutely admit that. I understand but, that nobody falls here. Okay. Nobody falls here. Right. 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 So that you well, know. I can take that. I can take that. Uh, but so my, my son is, and I are very close. I know that my son will tell the truth here today. Okay. That, now that is question. clarified in my mind. I have talked with Mr. Fraley, and I know things. My son was brought up to tell me the truth no matter what happened in his life. I told Mr. Fraley something that he didn't know, that when all of this happened, that they first left and went to Miami. That was not known. That was not known. So my son has told me, he called me after all this happened, said he was coming to Olympia, Kansas, where we lived, that he would turn himself into the authorities. That's what happened. So he has told the truth. I, I understand now, and I understand what he's done in this situation. I understand that. He should he should stop with us in the first place and decide it. You know, but he didn't. Okay. What we're trying to figure out today is how can I make your son most comfortable coming in and speaking to us under oath? Because we've never gotten him to uh, give full testimony under oath. So that's what we're going for today. Just have kept it telling you the truth. Okay. All right. I will do that. And uh, um, I'm to you to tell you the truth that he would tell it to his mother. I was planning on mentioning his mother in my uh, little presentation that I've worked up, but, so I'm that, glad you're supportive of that. That's fine, and uh, he was supportive of us being here. We're supportive of him. Uh, yes, this whole thing was wrong. There's been a lot of grief in both directions. And another thing that played into a part of the upsell on that phone call, that was also at the anniversary time of a death of another son of mine and his wife by a drunk driver. And so emotions were already high with me. And so if the court will forgive that, I would hope they would, but 
I'm sorry to hear that, and you have nothing to be forgiven because you didn't do anything wrong, and I don't want you to get the impression that we were telling you or saying you did it. And another thing that's yeah. important for me to